Our next guest needs no introduction. She is a Sky Money regular in the face of Bell Direct. She is Julia Lee and she's here to share her views on the world, financial markets and how she's investing right now. Julia, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Thanks, Marty. So, uh, first question, pretty tough year for investors in terms of, you know, their, their portfolios. Mm. Um, what do you think um, they can expect in the year ahead? I think firstly 2015 has been a really hard year for investors and that's because on the index level um, it has been difficult. If we have a look at the benchmark ASX 200 index, yeah. it's actually down around about 5%. But I think if we break away from the large cap companies, there have been a lot of successes on the market as well. For example, the indices that we look at are all weighted indices, so the bigger companies make a bigger chunk of the performance of those indices. But say we didn't weight the um, ASX 200 index, which is down about 5%, you'd actually have a positive 9% performance. So that means just taking the average of all of the 200 companies on yeah. the ASX 200, you've actually got a pretty decent performance. So if you had stayed away from a lot of the miners, some of the banks this year, you would have done well. And the same type of thing when you look at the mid cap and the small cap index as well. Mm. So having a look at some of those big performers are uh, their stocks like Blackmore's up 400 yep. percent, um, Bellamy's up 600 percent, uh, look at Domino's up around about 100 percent, Magellan Financial Group, Henderson up around about 60 percent. So really it's these gross stories which are dominating the market. So I think that's going to be a key focus in 2016. So you think, um, so what you're saying is 2015 growth stories worked well and you think that that trend will continue. What about at the sector level? What, are you, what, what sectors do you think will perform strongly next year? Well, I think there's going to be two key areas to look out for in 2016. One is a value area, and that's because certain sectors have been so beaten down, and mostly the commodity story. And the other side, I think, will be about trying to find growth in what is a very low growth environment. Mm. So I guess, um, well, value, it's important not to fall into some of those value traps and actually look for those companies that are going to change in terms of the underlying dynamics. I mean, one of the best performers in 2015 has been St. Barbara Mines. Now, this was a basket case last year, but it's managed to turn around its operations. The Aussie dollar's moved in its favour, and the stock's actually up by 900% wow. this year so far. So, it doesn't mean that you have to invest in the best performers. It just means that you need to start to see stocks pricing in better information. So, it could be a stock that's beaten down this year, but you start to bright price in better news flow and suddenly the stock price terms. The, the other area is growth. And I guess for people who are looking for growth, the key question is, well, how do you find these companies? And at a reasonable are, price. At a reasonable price. And there are a few things that I like to scan for as well. Um, one of these is looking for revenue momentum. So looking for revenue growth, even though there might not be profit growth, because this usually is a, a, a precursor to profit growth. And we know that earnings drive share prices or looking for um, uh, momentum in terms of earnings or momentum in terms of price. And one of the things that we have at Bell Direct is um, a, a strategy builder tool where you can just scan the market with different ideas. And one of the scans I've liked this year mm. is a dividend yield greater than 5% because Australians love dividends. Love yield, yep. um, looking for revenue growth for the previous period being greater than the last full year period. Um, and then also looking for the 13 day uh, price performance to be greater than 5%. So looking for price momentum as well. And that's uh, return around about 36% for the year annualised. Wow. But if you incorporate risk management into that and a 10% trailing stop loss, mm. that performance actually jumps to 63%. So, so what sort of companies are falling in that, in that world? Uh, I ran this scan not too long ago and the top three companies that came up on this scan is a very small company called PSZ. This is um, in mostly the IT area communication strategy uh, and it's returned about 25% this year. Um, and the second company that comes up in that scan is Fisher & Paykel. Okay. So in the sleep apnea space, that's so returned about 32% this year. And the third one is um, Arena, which is a real estate investment trust. It's only returned 10%, but being a real estate investment trust, ta there's tax benefits and, of course, a higher yield that's associated with that as well. So I usually scan, and that's not the start of my research, but it gives me some ideas to mm. look into further. What did you make of the RBA's decision today? Um, and what do you think it's going to mean for, say, some of the consumer discretionary stocks? The RBA seemed fairly content with where things were, and you'd have to say that the settings at the moment are getting fairly appropriate for, for some of the, the retailers, albeit, you know, Dick Smith got hammered, but we've got low oil prices, we've got low interest rates, um, improving consumer confidence. Do you think any of the retailers could look better in 2016? 
That's a really good question at the moment, um, Marty, because I think in terms of retailers, we're seeing two types of trend. One are companies that are doing extremely tough, and you mentioned Dick Smith, and that's probably going to have repercussions for some of the other electronic retailers out there in the market. For example, two retailers that have been doing pretty well in 2015 have been um, Dick, Dick Smith, um, uh, Harvey Norman as well as JB Hi-Fi, yep. but because of Dick Smith's problems, what we're probably going to see is heavy discounting in this space, and it's going to affect the whole whole sector there. But on the other side, we've had some underperformers that have started to see some good momentum just mm. sneaking in through the door, mm. and that's Meyer and Kathmandu. So the last quarterly numbers that they've come out with, the sales numbers have been relatively good. So we've started to see a little bit of positive price momentum coming into these stocks. And you think with Meyer, that could be part of the new management team, maybe maybe having and an effect on the business? Yeah, and I think when you get a company that's been beaten down so hard, it doesn't take that much to trigger a positive response in terms of the share price because the bad news has been priced in. And once you start to get some positive news come through, then we do see the share price bounce quite, quite, um, quite, quite a lot. But I guess we are coming up to a, a crucial time for these retailers, and that's the Christmas trading season. This tends to be the make or break uh, season for the retailers. So unfortunately, the electronic side of things, not going into this crucial Christmas period on a good note. But mm. on the other side, there are some retailers which are showing some signs of our life. What about some of the beaten up blue chips, names that we all know and love, you know, the Woolworths, the, the BHPs? What's your position on, on them at the moment, looking ahead for 2016? Sure. I think in my experience, um, some of the problems that we are seeing aren't problems that are going to disappear very quickly. And unfortunately for investors, this means that you have to view these, I guess, in terms of volatility and in terms of the share price moving around for a number of years. For mm. example, Woolworths isn't going to turn around in a matter of a few months. It takes a long time to fix some yeah, issues. Yeah, this is probably going to be more of a year turnaround story. The good news is that when you get beaten down stocks like this, it doesn't take much for positive momentum to come in. But on the flip side, you can see a lot more negative news come out as well. So I think timing is really important with some of these beaten up stocks. And we've seen it with the bank. You know, Australians have a love affair with the banks because we haven't had a recession in so long. But the share prices have bounced around so much. And I think Commonwealth Bank's back up to that $80 level. And not too long ago, it was under that $70 level. So I think with a lot of these blue chip companies, although they're not traditionally trading type companies, I think you have to be careful just with timing because you will see big bounces, but you'll see things go the other way. You hope way. for long term you should be right. Uh, only if the share price goes up. <laughs> Lily, thanks for your time. Thanks, Marty. After the break, we'll talk with a former Olympian about his business.